Hey guys, Mark here. I hope you're all doing well. In today's video, I'm going to demonstrate how to do the three-stranded trick braid, also referred to as the secret plate. The braid has a bit of mystery behind it, and this is because most people have quite a bit of difficulty figuring it out, and in this video, we're going to fix that. We're going to take a look at everything needed in order to create this braid. It is usually used in leatherworking in order to create straps, such as belts, but you can use it for other purposes as well. At first, when I began doing this braid, I thought it was quite challenging. But in fact, looking back, it is an incredibly easy braid to do. So you shouldn't be too intimidated by it. With that said, let's move on to the tutorial. Here you can see a three-stranded trick braid. It can be used on belts, bracelets, dog collars and other types of straps. Before you cut a strap that you're going to braid, you will need to account for the shrinkage that occurs because we overlap the different parts of our braid instead of using a straight line. So what is the shrinkage that occurs in a three-stranded trick braid? Well, different sources give us different numbers. Bruce Grant, for example, quotes the shrinkage at about a third. So if you start with a 3 foot long strap, you're going to end up with a 2 foot long braid. Ron Edwards, for example, quotes shrinkage at about 4%, which is significantly less than quote from Bruce Grant. That is why I made my own test, and the result is that it actually depends on how tight you make your braid. If you do it loosely, you will have less shrinkage than if you did it tightly. In my case, the shrinkage was under 10%. With that said, let's move on to cutting and preparing our strap for the braiding process. To prepare our strap, we're going to place two slits lengthwise onto our strap that will divide the width of our strap into three parts. Now there are many ways that you can do that, from just doing it by approximation or you can use any type of a scientific method that you would like. What I do is simply measure out the width of my strap. Then divide that width by 3 and transfer that width onto a compass. I then mark down the two dots onto my strap and on the other side and that is enough in order for me to guide two slits along this strap. If you're using a longer strap you could make a few more markings at the center in order to get a nice straight slit going along the entire strap. You could also just pull with your compass and that will give you a guide for your knife. Whatever works for you as long as you get two nice straight slits into your leather. Once you have done the two slits into your strap, it is time to continue with an optional step, which is to punch in two holes at the very end of your slit. Bruce Grant suggests that this prevents your leather from splitting further when under strain. I think it is a good idea and it also looks quite nice.
With that, the strap is ready to be braided. I should probably also address the issue of when to start your trick braid. In my opinion, it is best to do it at the very end. Why? Well, burnishing edges, for example, is very hard after you have braided your strap. Applying dye or finishes is also very hard once you have done your braiding. So in my opinion, you should do it at the very end of making a strap. It's time to start braiding. The braid is made using 8 steps. Six of these are identical to the ones used in the regular three-stranded braid. So let's begin. Pick up your left part and place it in between the other two. Then the right one goes between the other two. And then the left one again. In between the other two. Now pick up the bottom end and feed it through this opening here. So one end is on the left and two are on the right. Go through this opening, like this. Then on the bottom we have two parts on the left and one on the right. Go through this opening with your bottom end and this has straightened out our parts. We now continue with the right end in between the other two, then the left end, then the right end. With this we have done one sequence. Let's do another just to make sure we got everything down. Take the left end and go in between the other two. Then the right end, then the left end. Pick up your bottom end and go in between this opening, so one part is on the left and two on the right. Then on the bottom we have two parts on the left and one on the right. Go through. And this has straightened out our braid. We could now continue with step 6, 7 and 8. But at this point there is nothing holding our braid. So we would have to start again with step 1. two and three and then do the two steps that feed our bottom end through. At that point we would finish. I hope this was fairly clear and once you have done your braid it is time to adjust it. This is going to be a very loose braid here because it's very hard to show you a very tight one in this short tutorial. So what we're going to do now is simply adjust the parts of our braid and then pull on both sides in order to make them more even. So this is a very loose example of a three-stranded trick braid. I hope it was fairly clear. If you have any questions, please post them down below. Thank you for joining me in this tutorial and see you next time.